Hello, I'm Vitaly Glebichkin, speaking for Lex Sharonov, and in this video tutorial I'll show you how to work with raw files in 3D LUT Creator using this picture as an example. First, let's see how this raw file looks like in Photoshop. As you can see, the lighting on this photo is very yellow. Even at a temperature of 3700 kelvins, all objects are yellow. I will decrease the temperature and see that the normal white balance for this picture is about 2300 kelvins. It was shot in quite difficult conditions for shooting. At f2 I had to shoot at ISO 1000, which already creates a lot of noise. And with such white balance cooling we made the noise in the blue channel even more noticeable. However, despite all this, I would like to get from this image as much color as I can. I'll go to the camera calibration tab and try to do it. I'll separate red and blue colors. And add saturation to these channels. We can see that with the saturation rising, we add artifacts in the places where the color was too intensive, here and here. A feature of Adobe Camera Raw is that it cannot work with such colors that lie on the boundary of the color gamut. And if I change the exposure, these areas will remain devoid of detail, for example, like this. In addition, due to the fact that the picture was taken at a high ISO, we need to reduce this noise somehow. Now I'll go to the 3D LUT creator. Before uploading a RAW file here, I open the program settings. 3D LUT creator uses Libro library to open RAW files. Before loading the files into 3D LUT creator, you should check that Pro Photo color profile was selected. If you use sRGB color profile, the highly saturated colors may go outside the gamut, and it will be impossible to return them back with the white balance. Also, here you can select the mosaic that will be used when loading raw file. I drag and drop the raw file to the program window. A TIFF file appears in the folder with the raw file with the log C added to its name. What does it mean? After you load the raw file to the program, a log C profile appears and I turn it off. We see that the image looks very soft. The fact is that RAW files store greater dynamic range than our monitors can display. The RAW file may retain the clipped highlights, which are several stops brighter when the white point, and also the information in the shadows, which we don't see looking at the image. The main advantage of RAW file is that we can restore these highlights and shadows and can also change the white balance after the photo was shot. Why can't you change the white balance if you have already shot to JPEG? Because during RAW file processing to JPEG, a camera or any other program applies a contrast curve to it that changes color and saturation across the tonal range in different ways. After applying such a contrast curve, it is no longer possible to change the white balance without color distortion. What is the log C and the log generally? This is a logarithmic curve which is applied to the raw data. Since videographers developed raw format relatively recently, they didn't have this convenient workflow with the raw data like photographers did, so they found a way to build the raw data in a standard video stream. They started to apply a logarithmic curve to the sensor data. Compared with a linear curve, the logarithmic curve enhances shadows and where the linear curve goes in overexposure, the logarithmic curve still has a huge reserve of a tonal range. In addition, the logarithmic curve is more consistent with human perception, because in a logarithmic representation each f-stop change in brightness gives the same range of values. So, if I turn off the log, I see that the picture contains all highlights and shadows. If you look at the histogram, you can see that there was a cutoff before the logarithmic range ends. That is, if this picture was taken not with a Canon, but with Air Remove the Camera, for example, there would be more information on a wider range of highlights. 
Let's go back to the choice of the logarithmic curve. Many manufacturers have come up with their own kinds of logarithmic curves. They can come in handy if you're shooting with Aerie, Blackmagic, Canon, Sunny and other cameras. Logarithmic curves are slightly different as different cameras have different dynamic ranges and manufacturers have created these curves to maximize the use of video dynamic range by embedding in it the dynamic range of the sensor. 3DLAT creator converts the RAW files into a log-C format, which is offered by the Airy company for Alexa cameras, as this format is the most commonly used format and it has a huge dynamic range. If I turn on the log decoding data, in this case log C, the 3 lot creator understands that it is working with the raw data and these corrections start working differently. The brightness starts to control the exposure and the program uses a different algorithm for adjusting white balance that is applicable for the raw data. Also, when working with raw data, you may need to restore the highlights. Use white slider. And there is also a color recovery function from the highlights. The higher the value, the more color you recover from the highlights. However, there are not so many highlights in this image, so there is almost nothing to restore. You can use the eyedropper to automatically adjust the white balance. And now we get the photo, which is a purely technically developed RAW file. There are no decorations here, such as the contrast, blacks enhancement, camera profile and so on. And another important feature that is worth knowing, there is a field that specifies the cutoff threshold of the camera's sensor. When you open a RAW file, it sets automatically, but your loot files can be used on images from other photo and video cameras and it is not always possible to obtain this value automatically. If you have an obvious overexposure in all three channels in the photo, you can press button A and this threshold will be taken automatically. If I put it on white, the program will not be able to determine where the color is really useful and where overexposure happens. If I, for example, decrease the brightness, the program will assume that it was white color and it will color it with the white balance. If I set the cutoff threshold correctly, the program will understand that it was overexposed area and it doesn't need to color it with the white balance. Let's go back to the normal settings. So after we have a technically correct developed RAW file, we can begin to improve this picture. First let's darken the shadows. You can do it with the black slider. In order to smoothly change the values, I hold down the shift key. I can add contrast. I significantly increase the contrast and adjust the point where the contrast increases. At this slider position, the girl is separated from the background as much as possible with the help of contrast, so I leave it like this. Now let's try to add more color. To do this, I go to the Channels tab and I start to push the points of the channel mixer to get more saturated colors. Because the entire picture turned too yellow, I'll change the white balance a little. And I slightly add exposure. Also, I slightly change the contrast and desaturate the red color on the AB grid. Now I add toning. 
I add magenta to the shadows and slightly add blue to make the snow whiter. So here is my developed RAW file without any local corrections. I press Loot to PS button. Photoshop asks us to choose profile. I click yes. And that's what we get. The original TIFF file in the log profile is opened in Photoshop and there is a LUT layer which converts it. I name it develop. What do we have as a result? In Photoshop we have the original raw data encoded in a log format on which I can take any action. I can retouch it, use liquify, reduce noise, make dodge and burn and all this will happen before developing a raw file. If I want to convert a picture with different colors or other corrections, then I will not have to redo retouching and liquify because the entire raw development occurs in the adjustment layer with the LUT. Cool, right? Let's look at the photo closer. We see that there is quite a lot of noise, which is natural under such shooting conditions, but I will decrease the noise in the raw file before conversion. There are no additional complexities for the noise reduction program, because it will work with the original raw data. I duplicate the layer. I will use the trial version of the pass the noise plugin. Since this is log data with a low contrast, you shouldn't apply a lot of reduction effect, otherwise with increasing contrast you will intensify the artifacts. Noise reduction is complete, I turn on a layer with a LUT to see the picture in a full contrast. We see that the noise is suppressed pretty well. Now I'm gonna fix some of the defects of the photo. I'll do a little retouching. I will not retouch the whole image because the lesson would take too long. You can also use the dodge and burn. Also, for local color correction you can switch brush mode to soft light and, for example, if we need to remove the blue color, you can specify the brush color. Choose 128 in red and green, so these channels are not changed, and choose 0 in blue. I get this yellow color. With these settings, the brush will change only the blue channel by shifting it to the yellow. I will set the opacity to 2%. And here you can see how it works. I slightly brighten the eyes. This is before noise reduction and retouching, and that is after.
There is a blue spot here. I'll try to reduce it. What can we do more? I will add several LUT layers above this layer, but under the develop layer. You can find these LUTs in the Facebook community. They allow you to change the exposure and white balance for log C files. I will load the LUT which increases exposure. As you can see, I can increase the exposure just by adjusting the opacity of the layer. To do this, I do not need smart objects or Adobe Camera Raw. All corrections are located at the retouched photo under this LUT layer. I invert the mask and add exposure where I want. You can also make dodge and burn via exposure. This way you will affect the color less. Now I load another LUT file. For example, this LUT makes white balance warmer. You can simply adjust the white balance with the LUT layer. I'll invert the mask and add warm spots where I want them. On the lamp, on the rug, and I warm the blue highlight on the basket. I add another LUT layer that makes the white balance cooler. And I delete the mask where I want. I reduce the yellow in the snow, and this building too. And the last layer, which adds magenta. Here I simply add colored spots to increase a variety of colors. Now I would like to add contrast to the face, and it's better to do this in the developed picture, so I add a curves layer above the develop layer. I will add points to the curves corresponding to the shadows and the lights on the face. And brighten the lights a little.
that was before and after. And now I make a mask to affect only the face. It's better to slightly reduce the effect. And the last thing I would like to add here is a glow effect. To do this I go to the channels, make a mask on the basis of the green channel and add a curves layer. I blur this selection in the mask settings. Let's make 30 pixels blur. And now I erase the black point. And I can add blue color to get a blue glow. Now around bright objects we have a glow and I can slightly modify the mask to leave the glow only around the brightest objects. This is the before and after. Sharpening is also worth doing after developing. I'll do this with an action. That's it, I'm done with this photo. I did it quickly, but the main points were described. I hope you had fun and if something is unclear, please ask in comments. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Thanks for watching and have a great color. Goodbye.